Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Can It Take a K26? The show where we take a variety of blasters and see if they can be upgraded using a K26 spring. I am your host, Captain Xavier, and today we're going to be covering some of the newer Mega Blasters that have come out. Uh, starting with the Tri-Break. The Tri-Break was released in 2018 as part of the N-Strike Mega Series and is a bottom-primed, three-barrel smart AR Mega Blaster. And uh, it's gotten interesting reviews. Some people saying that the whole breaking action is, you know, is annoying and completely pointless since it does nothing but slows down reload, and it's kind of hard to argue with that. Uh, other people thinking that it's just really nifty, and some people wanting to modify it so that the breaking action does do something. Um, but I want to get this thing open and see if it can take a K26. So, let's do this thing. Alright, well, we are in... And as you can see, it's fairly simple. Smart AR system, big old plunger tube, huge plunger tube. Um, and as I understand it, there are some leaks in the system, but not too bad. Mm. If I were to hazard a guess, I'm going to say that it's not going to be able to because of compression. This thing really does compress that really long spring pretty much all the way. It's definitely not going to get enough compression because the frequency on the two springs are almost the same, but this one is at least twice as wide. And so you're never going to be able to get enough compression. But let us take a look in the bins and see if we can't find something of a similar length. Um, I am going to give this chrono spring a try. And it might even fit over the stock spring. Let's, let's find out. That sounds... Oops. Wrong way. Ha! Sure enough. Um, looks like we need to take out some of these supports that are up here in the plunger head. Um, because it's interfering. Okay! So now the two springs will in fact nest. Now the question is whether or not it the catch can support that much weight or if we'll need to reduce it in some way, but for now, we're going to give it a try, make sure that we put the uh, plunger rod back in the right way. For those of you thinking the mod this, I would uh, point out that there is one screw that's slightly hidden. You can see one hole right here that does not line up with a screw hole, but when you break the thing open, it then lines up with the screw hole. So if you're having trouble getting it open, that might be why. So it, uh, oh, it was catching. Oh, now it doesn't want to. What's up with that? We're not getting it to catch. It caught while I, before I had it all the way together. And now that I've got it all the way together, it doesn't want to catch. I believe I have found the issue. And that is that the uh, spring guides right here in the handle are interfering with the big spring getting enough compression. So, we're going to dremel them down. There we go. Now it locks. Oh, that's mean. Yes. All right. 
Get the last couple of screws in this thing. All right, well, the spring upgrade was a success. I had to dremel out the plunger head and I had to dremel out the spring um, supports in the handle, but it now fits both the stock spring and a chrono spring. And uh, as we all know, uh, rival stock springs are really, really beefy. So this thing has a, an excellent prime now and fires wonderfully. Oh, that is terrifying. Um, yeah, I am very, very pleased with this. Uh, K26 won't get enough compression, so that is out, but uh, that spring fit beautifully, and I wouldn't be surprised if you could actually get even a heavier spring into this. So, uh, nice little pistol. Like I said, I would probably take the, uh, the braking shroud off just to give you, uh, make it easier to reload and make it probably a little bit easier to holster. Uh, but I like it, so let's move on to the next contestant. Our next contestant is the much requested and much anticipated Twin Shock. This one was sent to me by a fan. Thank you so much. I assume he really wanted it tested, or he just really wanted to give me something cool. Either way, he is awesome. The Twin Shock was originally released in 2017, is a front loading, um, double barreled slam fire enabled mega blaster and it is absolutely fantastic and i see why people like it so much that prime is just smooth and i love it i definitely would like to see it with a pump that didn't have a pistol grip because that's just my preference um i understand a lot of people really like vertical foregrips i i'm not a fan of them i would like to see this with a regular shotgun style pump just because i think it would make the lines better. Uh, this thing would definitely look magnificent as painted up as a some kind of a plasma cannon kind of thing for cosplay. Um, but what we want to know is can it take a K26? Okay. Well, it definitely looks like an enormous rough cut. I mean, as far as the catch mechanisms, the double prime, it does have two plunger tubes. Um, yeah, just the whole nine yards. I don't know how it actually, oh, I see, I see. So there's a, another side of the gear on this side that interacts and that's what keeps the gear from moving, thus forcing it to, to push the, the plungers back. Oh, okay. For a second I thought we weren't going to be able to get to the plunger rods. Those are somewhat anemic looking. Not worried about the gears. That is a huge gear, so I'm not terribly worried about it breaking under the stress. Though, two K26s is an awful lot of weight to be trying to draw. So the blaster by no means utilizes the full compression potential of the spring which is good because that means that there is there uh, then a chance that we could get k26 in there and it would still compress um, I am very dubious about the idea of having k26 on both sides of this all right, well, we have two K26s in there, and Lord help me, I really hope I don't break my shiny new blaster. We're going to give it a try. All right, well, that is a yes for the Twin Shock. Uh, I was having some concerns about the performance when I first tested it, because the flight patterns were incredibly erratic, but that is pretty much what you're gonna get if you upgrade any kind of a Mega Blaster and are firing uh, regular Mega Darts, the Whistler Darts. They do not like going faster than they were designed. Uh, they veer off and you have no idea where they're gonna go. However, when I tested it with the Lytake Suction Cup Megas, I was easily able to hit a man-sized target at uh, at a decent range. So that's the trick is you're gonna have to use different ammo if you want to be able to use this effectively. The downside of the light take rounds, they are a little bit smaller. And so 
they don't like being in a smart AR blaster. So you may need to either um, put a little bit of tape on the inside to tighten up the barrels, or you might do what we did back in the day before Elites and actually tape your Litec darts, put uh, packing tape all the way around them uh, to get a slightly better seal. You could also potentially, if you took out the posts, um, and even possibly if you didn't take out the posts, um, put an Elite dart inside to stretch it out. Uh, that is going to make them heavier, which will probably negatively affect their range, but it might um, very much improve their accuracy. Um, but uh, whatever you put in it, uh, K26 definitely fits. I did not get the impression that the Prime was so much heavier that it was at risk of breaking. It is a hefty Prime, um, but the gears in there are very, very solid. You have the one gear that's really big and solid, and then two uh, areas that are actually uh, permanently affixed rows of straight teeth. Um, so it is a very simple mechanism. I'm not worried about it breaking um, too easily. Definitely don't want to dry fire it once you've got the K26 in it because that is just an awful lot of force being flung. Uh, even with the ARs in, it's just not slowing it down enough. The plunger heads are padded, but not a lot. So you might consider adding additional padding to the plunger heads. Um, but yeah, let's recap. All right, for those of you just tuning in or who just skipped to the end to see the results, that was a no for the tri-brake, but yes to taking a chrono spring in addition to the stock spring with a little bit of dremeling in the handle and the plunger tube. So if you've upgraded your chronos to K26, you can put the spring in here and give this a massive boost. So that is lovely. And that was a yes for the twin shock, which actually kind of surprised me. Um, I do not feel that the added weight is at risk of breaking it. The, the gears were very solid, or the one big gear is very solid, and the Prime is not so heavy that it feels like you're straining things or stressing things, or that, I mean, there was no issue at all with compression. Um, uh, you don't have to slam it back really hard to get it to lock. It, it catches just fine, and it fires both darts just fine. Um, the downside with both of these, when you put this much power in it, is... Um, Official Nerf Mega Darts, the Whistlers, don't fly well at those velocities. They're just not designed for it, and you end up with incredibly erratic flight patterns, uh, and you can't hit a man-sized target at 30 feet, which isn't terribly useful. However, if you fire either the Busby Suction Cup Mega Darts or the Litec Suction Cup Mega Darts, you get a much more reliable flight pattern, uh, which is fantastic. The downside is the the Litec darts are a little bit smaller than standard Nerf darts, Nerf Mega darts, and so the barrel fit is not great. And as we all know, that is not good in Smart AR blasters, and both of these are Smart ARs, so they have a tendency to push the dart out. So you're either going to need to put some tape in the barrel, um, or put tape around the darts. That's something we used to do back in the day before Elite darts to get a good seal, is we'd actually put a layer of packing tape around the darts. And you could do that to either the barrel or the darts, your preference. Um, in order to get it to seat better. I'd love to find a material like brass, like we do brass in, in um, elite barrels. I have yet to find a source for brass that fits mega darts. If any of you know of a source where I can get brass large enough to fit mega darts, I would love to actually brass at least the very um, ends of all of these barrels to get it a better uh, seat on the, the, the darts. So, yeah, uh, I do apologize for not having range tests and chrono tests um, for this episode. This is one that I know you all probably desperately want it, but it is unfortunately pouring rain. And so I cannot do the, the outside shooting and the chrono testing and all of that. So um, possibly in the future, I'll get around to actually doing chrono tests on these and I'll let you guys know what the results are. I don't have the initial chrono values either because once again, it was raining all day uh, and I didn't have the opportunity to get those, but Hopefully in the future, I will definitely be putting a stock attachment point on this one, and I might even put a stock attachment point on that one, just for the sheer absurdity of it. Um, both of these could definitely use one. This one absolutely needs it being, you know, pump action, all of that. Um, I would love to try to get uh, a grip that isn't pistol grip on this, just because, once again, I really like, I prefer that in for just lots of reasons. Um... That's just my personal preference, and I could probably just cut this off and then make a, a, a shroud out of something, but uh, I'd like to do something a little bit fancier than that. Maybe maybe 3D print one. Uh, I don't know if somebody has already, but stock attachment point for sure, um, and maybe some cosmetics, though I generally leave my Mega Blasters red just 
because uh, I like the red. So, all right, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, other than the lack of numbers, uh, go ahead and put those in the comment section. If you have requests for future episodes, um, let me know, and I will try to get a hold of those blasters. So, there it is. Thank you for watching.